Hello everyone and welcome back to another No Knots video. Sorry I haven't been posting videos as often as I want. Uh, life got a little crazy for a while and looks like it's going pretty crazy right now for everyone else. Um, so today I thought we'd do a video to talk about borders. Um, getting nice clean borders on your your bands is the goal of every tablet weaver. And to do that, we're going to go through a couple techniques today. Um, I'm using a very light colored yarn here to, so you can see uh, better how uh, what I mean. Um, so let's talk about the first thing that you'd want to do for good borders. And that is turning your cards always in the same direction no matter what happens in the pattern. If we can zoom in a little bit here. You can see that these sides are going in the same direction no matter what. That'll give you a nice clean edge and if you're leaving little loops on the side as you do the next set of uh, the design and then pulling it tight, it kind of helps also to get those nice, you know, pull in the thread to get as, as far as it can go. Um, but if you notice, this half of the pattern versus this half of the pattern, you see the bumps a lot more than you do down here. Um, still using the same color thread, but down here I used what's known as an invisible weft technique. This comes from Peter Collingwood's book, uh, Techniques of Tablet Weaving. And we're going to go over how you can use... Uh, if you want to use like a light colored yarn but have dark colored borders or vice versa that you don't get those those little bumps on the side so let me set up so that you can see how to do that uh, from a better angle so here you can see from the side uh, view on how we're gonna do what's called the invisible weft technique this right here has all been done just using two threads on top and two threads on bottom. So we're going right down the center of our thread uh, shed. To do the invisible weft technique, we're actually going to do three threads on top and one thread on bottom. So to do that, I've set up just the edge cards. You'll only need just two cards, one on each side. Uh, one is set up in an S direction, so it's going in the S on my left and the other one's going slanting excuse me slanting s slanting z on the other side on the right side so s slant is a z thread and a z slant is an s thread just for clarification and that will allow you to grab this back bottom thread and pull it up and go underneath same with the other side. This is the top, this is the bottom. We're going to grab the bottom back thread and go underneath. Just grab it up, pass the shuttle under the three threads, and go across. Advance the, war or advance the pattern and do it one more time. I'm going to go underneath the back bottom, the new back bottom of each time you uh, pass the, the shuttle through. And what this allows it to do is instead of being right on the side, with three threads on top, it pushes that weft thread down to the bottom. I don't know if you can see this side versus this side. This is the side or the part of the pattern where I just went right through the center and down here is where I was doing it um, with the invisible weft technique. As you can see, really, with that, even though I'm using a very light colored weft, you cannot see from the top. You do see a little picks at the bottom, but not from the top or from the right side. Now what if you don't want your cards to be um, like this because what this does is when they are angled out like this each side is going away from the center of the pattern 
for me that's aesthetics and because I just like it because it's easier to do it just grab this back thread but you can do it if your cards are flipped the other way so this is a Z on the left and an S slant. Z on the slant on the left, S slant on the right. Um, S slant is Z thread, Z slant is S thread. But instead of, so now instead of doing the back thread, we're going to do the forward thread, which is actually a little bit harder to grab. It's, 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 you tend to grab both the, th the back and the front. What I do is I spin the cards up a little, use my pinky and grab that bottom thread so that I get it. The back one is still down, but the forward one is now up. So we can do three, uh, three threads on top at one time. Spin it around a little bit. Go underneath three threads and then pass the shuttle. One more time, it's since it's kind of hard to see with this dark card. Spin your card up just a little bit and go underneath the forward bottom thread. So it's a little, like I said, it, for me, I prefer the other way. It's a little trickier this way. But it's up to you to decide which one is best, uh, more comfortable for you. Going under three threads. And that pushes that left thread to the bottom of your border. Anybody might be asking, well, why not just use a weft that matches my border colors? That's a very good question. And to answer that question, we have to come back to the front so we can get nice and tight and close up on our pattern. When tablet weaving, when a pattern starts going away from a point. So here's a turning point, and now the threads, the pattern is going in the opposite direction on each side. You see the weft. You can see that white thread right there is my weft. You can see it up here, just a little bit. There's the white thread weft and here is the white weft again and right up here. Now when tablet weaving comes, when you have a turn right here, you don't see the, the, the weft because it's joining, it's coming into itself. It's only when it, you hit a turn and it goes away that you see a weft. And in this pattern, my borders and this purple are the same color. So technically I should be using either the purple or a very similar color for my weft. Um, but obviously I wanted to use something different so that you guys could see what's going on with the borders. But say this purple was the white or the yellow or this other lighter purple, but I wanted to keep the dark purple on the outside well, then I would use a weft that matched whatever color was this primary pattern color, whatever this dark purple I wanted to change it to, but keep the dark purple, then I could still hide the weft on the edges and it would match this this little, I don't know, it's not really a hole, it's just how tablet weaving works, that you see a little bit of the weft, because you don't want to pull it too, so tight that you wouldn't see it because it's not going to look nice. It's just a, a feature of tablet weaving. But this way I could have that weft match whatever color is my primary uh, color and still have a border color that could be different. So here we're on nice and close and you cannot see my weft at all. But if we move up the pattern a little bit, you can see this is where I was going through uh, two threads on top, two threads on bottom, and this is where I was going through uh, three threads on top, one thread on bottom. So it makes this just really nice and clean looking edge. Well, that's it from me. I hope everyone found this video enjoyable, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I 
can I guarantee you when I'm going to get new videos uploaded and maybe not until the whole world just calms down a little bit. Um, but I'm going to, I've got more videos planned, so stay tuned, stay safe, and aloha.